Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson with Principles of Management, Chapter 15, your final chapter. You are home now. Uh, we will speak about strategic human resource management, very important in your organization. Some of our learning objectives, understand the scope and changing role of strategic human resource management in Principles of Management, uh, understand key elements in the war for talent, and yes, there is a war for talent. Uh, engage in effective selection and placement strategies. Understand the roles of pay structure and pay for performance. Understand the components of high performance work systems. Understand or use the human resources balance scorecard, which we talked about uh, in the last chapter, uh, to gauge and proactively manage human capital, including your own. As always, we go through our framework, and you see we're here with strategic human resources uh, all the way at the end, uh, going through planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. And that's what uh, the basis of management is. Uh, requirements of uh, sh uh, you know short shorter term of SHRM uh, is attracting uh, the right employees to the company, identifying metrics to help employees stay on target to meet the company's goals, and rewarding employees appropriately so they stay engaged and stay motivated. Right? You want employees who come in and are excited about coming in not saying that if you had a gazillion dollars that that you would come in and, and do that job but to be excited and come in and, and make something happen make something work in the realm of your own work environment HR is a strategic partner as these days they're no longer just uh, doing simple hiring and and firing and things of that nature uh, they're a strategic partner with management now organizations that value their employees are more profitable than those that do not and this is true all managers and executives need to be involved uh, because the role of human capital is so vital to the company's competitive advantage and we'll watch some videos on that uh, when organizations enable develop and motivate human capital they improve accounting profits as well as shareholder value in the process process. Um, so HR is a strategic partner. Uh, also you have to talk about competence. Uh, to what extent does our company have the required knowledge, skills, and abilities to implement the strategy? Do we have the right people, uh, the right uh, materials, the right resources in order to do this? Consequence, uh, to what extent does our company have the right measures, rewards, incentives in place to align people's efforts with the company strategy? You know, a lot of companies uh, when new management comes in they say you know we really need uh, some type of um, uh, incentive plan uh, to, to incentivize our employees. Uh, governance, to what extent does our company have the right to structure communication systems and policies to create a high performing organization? Uh, some people say, oh, well, I don't like that they know what I send in my emails. Well, you know what, it's their property. Uh, you're working for the company. I'm sure you signed something that said you wouldn't do certain things, but after you've been at a company for a while, then people think that, you know, you should have they, you know, it's their liberty, it's their right to do certain things. Uh, so, you know, what I always tell people is to go back to the mindset that you had when you first got that job and how excited you were about having that opportunity. Uh, learning and leadership, uh, to what extent can our company respond to uncertainty and learn uh, and adapt to change quickly, right? Uh, being able to move quickly on your feet uh, is, is a, a big component of, uh, of to being able to, to work and maneuver around today's uh, corporate environment. A company's human capital asset is the collective sum of the attributes, life experience, knowledge, inventiveness, energy, and enthusiasm that its people chosen to invest in their work. Uh, that that's comes from the Society of Human Resource Management Research, uh, Research Quarterly. Um, and so th these are pretty good. Uh, HR is a strategic partner. Let me enlarge that uh, just so we kind of breeze through it a little bit. So you have selection and placement, right? So selecting, selecting the right individual for an organization is critical uh, to human resource tasks thoroughly considered using selection process, right? So you, you, if you get the wrong person, you're going to basically waste money. All right, uh, and you have to place that that correct person that you get in the right position. Job design uh, refers to the process of putting together various elements to uh, form a job, bearing in mind organizational and individual worker requirements as well as considerations for health, safety, and ergonomics. Right, so you have to design the job appropriately, right person, right job correct resources and environment around them. Compensation and rewards, uh, how organizations pay employees represents one of the most tangible elements of human resource management. Such rewards can be found in real estate companies that highlight uh, commissions earned by their employees, right? And then these other things come into play. Uh, are you doing the things that are most ethical in order to get those commissions? 
um, diversity management. Uh, so diversity goes far beyond the idea of avoiding discrimination and involves actively appreciating and using the differences and perspectives and ideas that individuals bring to the workplace. So it's not just about, hey, we don't want to get sued, so let's get some other type of people in here. It's about, you know, bringing in new great ideas from uh, different avenues that you might not have thought of. So discussion questions, uh, as always, those are great. Four right there. Uh, discuss them uh, with your peers, with your parents, whoever you like to discuss them with. The war for talent uh, refers to competition among organizations to attract and retain the most able employees. Uh, and, it, you know, it, it's kind of crazy because those individuals that uh, that these employers are after they have a lot of decisions and sometimes that can affect the turnover rate because as soon as something goes wrong they say hey you know what uh, I can go over to, to Joe Schmo's company and uh, he said he's gonna treat me a little bit better so talent management anticipating the need for human capital and setting the plan to meet it uh, so you have succession planning right so uh, what if a vice president becomes a president then who fills that person that void right there a uh, succession planning ensures that employees are recruited and developed to fill each key role within the company right so every key role uh, we have someone uh, that's kind of coming up the pipeline uh, to fill those shoes Attracting the right workers uh, to the organization. The organization must be clear about the type of employee it wants. Don't settle. If you settle, you will not get the right person. An employees' goals and aspirations should match those of the company. Uh, you know, I know a guy, and he was a president of a company, and he said that he used to not hire talent that he thought could possibly be better than him. But later on in his career, he realized that he should get people that were that he felt were better than him. Uh, not that they were going to take over, but they were going to be the ones that would strengthen the organization. So signature experience is the distinctive practice that shows what it's really like to work at a company. At Whole Foods, for example, team-based hiring is a signature experience. Employees in each department vote on whether a new employee will be retained after a four-week trial period. This demonstrates uh, to potential hires that Whole Foods is all about collaboration. And that's a lot of collaboration. Uh, you know, if somebody just woke up on the bad side of the bed and and uh, said, you know what, I don't like that person, I'm going to vote them out. So, uh, but that that you know, you could tell that Whole Foods, and if you've been to a Whole Foods, you know that they have the right type of environment. They have the right type of people uh, around them so uh, so I'm, I'm sure it works for them and retaining star employees so you can't just keep get these star employees you got you have to keep them uh, what assignments have you found uh, most engaging these are some of the questions you can ask which of your accomplishments in the last six months uh, made you proudest and uh, what makes for a great uh, day at work right so you want to retain these star employees you don't want to let them go those uh, bottom feeders you want to you want to let them go ahead if they want to leave hey knock yourself high five I had a young lady who uh, you know she said she got another offer right she had been looking for a while and uh, wasn't especially you know uh, jumping up and down about her performance and she said that she was gonna leave and she expected that I would you know match uh, offer or something like that or try and keep her stay but uh, no not gonna match any offer I'd love to see you go um, so give employees what they want uh, connect people with mentors and uh, help them build uh, their networks. Uh, successful managers uh, dedicated 70% uh, more time to networking activities than their less successful counterparts. So if you're managing people, think about that. Uh, help connect people with a sense of purpose. Uh, younger workers uh, rank meaningful work and challenging experiences at the top of their job search list. Social networking as a career building strategy. Social networking should be a central element in any job search strategy. Many jobs are filled by knowing someone who knows about an open position, so it's important to network. And I don't know the exact number, but I know it's in the 80 percentile that uh, of jobs that that come from people who know people within the company. You have a three talent uh, management practices, uh, create a globally consistent talent evaluation process, achieve cultural diversity in a global setting, and develop and manage global leaders, right? So just like McDonald's, McDonald's is made the same way in China as it is, as it is in, um, in Artesia or Cerritos or Norwalk. More great discussion questions. Love them. Enjoy them. But they will be your last, so I'm sure you'll miss them. 
Uh, so job description, best practices, uh, I'm going to just kind of skim over this, but I want you to go back and, and review it in detail yourself. An accurate and complete job description is a powerful strategic human resource management tool that costs little to produce and can help considerably in reducing turnover. So if I tell you exactly what I want you to do within my organization, we agree upon it, you say that you can do it, I'm saying I need someone who can do it, then we typically will have less turnover. Uh, tailoring uh, recruitment and selection to match companies company culture right we need the right type of people in our company uh, we don't need uh, like say for Google happening you know fun energized company we don't need any fuddy duddies uh, tools and methods uh, interviewing and testing right so different types of interviews uh, so many different ways to, uh, for people to interview um, you know I've interviewed with multiple people and they all have their own different style uh, but uh, one thing that's consistent in different, well, not always consistent, but I mean consistent in wherever it is, is is testing. Like, so if you take, I've taken the Wonderlic test uh, to become employed at, at uh, certain companies, and uh, the test is consistent, right? Uh, so if you take it for ABC company or XYZ company, it's going to be the same test. Uh, so read over that, but testing really does come into play, and it's it, it helped in the organization I was using it in. And uh, international staffing and placement, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later on, like what should you do, when should you use somebody from a host country, and what should you, should you uh, just fly someone out there and say you're going to live here for this amount of time. So writing an effective job description, kind of breeze through these, but I want you to go back and kind of read them and let it sink into your brain. You want to list the job requirements in bullet form for a quick scanning. Use common industry terms, not uh, your, your jargon from within your company. Don't confuse by using organization specific uh, terms and acronyms. Use meaningful job titles. Uh, use common search terms as keywords. Include information about the organization. Highlight special intangibles and, unuse, and unusual benefits of the job and workplace. And specify the job's location and links to the local community pages. You want to tailor a uh, selection to match the company culture. Like I said before, happening company, live, uh, you don't want any fuddy-duddies. Uh, recruitment ads uh, show Southwest founder Herb Keller uh, dressed as Elvis and read, work in a place where Elvis has been spotted. The qualifications, it helps to be outgoing, maybe even a little bit off-center, and be prepared to stay a while. After all, we have the lowest employee turnover rate in the industry, right? That means people are leaving there at a less rapid rate than anywhere else. Tools and methods of interviewing. Uh, situational interviews. Describe a problem you had with someone and how you handled it, right? Walk me through a situation. If you don't have any situations, you need to find some for that interview. Uh, Future-oriented situation. Uh, suppose you came up with a faster way to do a task, but your team was reluctant to make the change. What would you do in that situation? Uh, so if someone asked me that question, I think I would have a pretty good answer because I've done it the right way and I've also done it the wrong way. Uh, what not to discuss in an interview is rarely inappropriate to talk about age unless it's a requirement of a job duty. Individuals over 40 are legally protected from age discrimination, right? So you say, well, what, what type of job would it be that it would be okay to talk about age? Well, there's certain things like being an airplane pilot that, you know, certain people cannot, at a certain age, you probably don't want them flying the plane. Uh, it is illegal to use factors in regards to race, color, national origin, or gender in hiring decisions if this information is volunteer be careful not to discriminate you may not want to ask about smoking health related uh, questions or disabilities in an interview and do not question about uh, marital status children personal life pregnancy or arrest record uh, and I was sitting in an interview with a guy so it was me a guy and another uh, a, a manager who was a lady she had to go to a, another a meeting so she left and it was just me and the guy and the guy started talking and, and I don't know if he did it on purpose or just didn't know any better but then he asked the lady in the interview did she, if she had a significant other and that's a you know huge red flag big no-no and uh, I was like I didn't have a meeting but I have a meeting now and I had to excuse myself from that as well because not going down on this uh, sinking ship with that guy uh, pre-employment assessment tests uh, thinking styles behavioral traits and occupational interests uh, the, the test I told you guys about the Wonderlic test that's what they actually give the quarterbacks uh, in the NFL uh, to see if they can uh, if they can uh, kind of pass the requirements of that test
Uh, international staffing and placement in our increasingly global, global economy. Managers need to decide between using expatriates or hiring locals when staffing international locations. Expatriates are employees who are assigned uh, to a foreign location on a temporary basis, and then they're going to go back. Uh, when you read the text, you'll see it's a whole thing, like if you leave and then you come back and your motions all change and all kind of crazy stuff. Uh, so managers may choose an expatriate when company-specific technology or, or knowledge is important, confidenti confidentiality and staff position is an issue. Uh, there is need for speed. Assigning an expatriate is usually faster than hiring local. Uh, work rules uh, regarding local workers are restrictive and the corporate strategy is focused on global integration. That's when you would use an expatriate. And managers may want a local hire, uh, want a local hire when uh, a need to interact with local customers, suppliers, employees, or officials is paramount. Uh, corporate strategy is focused on multi-domestic uh, slash marketed, market-oriented operations. Uh, cost is an issue. Expatriates often bring high relocation slash travel costs, right? I want you to fly my whole family and my, you know, first set of cousins over here. Uh, immigration rules uh, regarding foreign workers are restrictive. And there are large cultural differences uh, or distances between the host country and the candidate expatriates. So relocation amongst uh, graduates in the United States. So people, when they graduate from college, they just say, you know what, I'm going wherever I always wanted to go. So although upwards of 85% of college grads move back home, uh, Washington, D.C. ranks number one as the most desirable place for graduates in the United States to relocate if possible. So more late and great discussion questions. Enjoy. They won't be there forever. Uh, the roles of pay structure and pay for performance. Pay can be thought of in terms of total compensation packet. That includes the individual's base salary, so how much you get paid. Variable pay like a bonus, share ownership, and other benefits, including your health and uh, dental benefits. That is actually pay, and you'll see how it's kind of uh, fed into what you, what you truly make. Um, so let me increase this just really quick. So uh, non-monetary pay description includes benefits that do not involve do not involve tangible value such as desirable location, right? Uh, so it may not be non-monetary, right? But if you're at a desirable desirable location, maybe closer to home, may not have to go that far, you may be able to walk. Think about it. Direct pay employees base wages. Uh, indirect pay, everything from uh, legally required programs to health insurance, retirement, housing, etc. Uh, incentive pay, a bonus pay when specified performance objectives are met, such as pink Cadillac given to successful Mary Kay employees. And you always see those pink Cadillacs. Stock options, a right to buy a piece of the stock, right? So that's also something that can be given. And bonuses, a gift given occasionally to reward exceptional performance for special occasions, right? Uh, always happy when you see a bonus uh, come your way, right? All right, so setting pay levels. Uh, managers should make sure that the pay level is fair relative to what other employees in the position are being paid or you have some uh, angry campers. A job evaluation determines um, the internal value of the job. The more vital uh, the job to the company's success, the higher the pay level. Uh, when the setting uh, reward systems, uh, when setting reward systems, it's important to pay for what the company actually hopes to achieve. <clears throat> it, uh, if, you know, so you don't want to definitely want to keep trying to shortchange somebody. Uh, if companies truly want to achieve what they hope for, they need payment systems aligned with their goals. Right? You're gonna have to, you know, chalk up some cash if you want the biggest and baddest and best individual. Uh, so pay for performance, uh, ties paid directly uh, to an individual's performance in meeting specific business goals or objectives. Often we'll combine a fixed base salary with a variable pay component such as bonuses or stock options that vary uh, with the individual's performance. Innovative uh, employee recognition programs have a couple of those going on at my job. Uh, in addition to regular pay structures and systems, companies often create special uh, programs that reward exceptional employee, employee performance. The financial software company Intuit Inc. Uh, instituted a program called Spotlight. The purpose of Spotlight is to spotlight performance, innovation, and uh, service dedication, which is pretty cool. Uh, so pay structures for groups and teams, you have gain sharing, profit sharing, team-based pay. So gain sharing is a form of pay for, for, for performance. In gain sharing, the organization shares the financial gains with employees. Employees receive a portion of the profit achieved from their specific efforts and ideas. Uh, how much they receive is determined by the performance against the plan. 
The uh, profit sharing uh, plans that provide an incentive to employees based on company profits. Uh, the assumption behind these programs that the organizations are profitable uh, thanks to the efforts of all employees. And then last but not least, you have team-based pay, uh, which helps to motivate members to achieve team goals. Uh, one way to structure the pay is to first identify the type of team and then choose the pay option that most appropriate uh, um, that is most appropriate to that team type. More great discussion questions, almost there, uh, about nine more slides. Uh, services formed in the E uh, or electronic HRM system or human resource management system. Answer basic compensation questions, look up employee benefits information, process candidate recruitment expense, receive and scan uh, resumes into recruiting software, uh, enroll employees in training programs, maintain training catalog, administer tuition reimbursement, and update your personnel files. The value of high performance work systems, uh, employees who are highly motivated in conceiving, designing, and implementing workplace processes are more engaged and perform better, right? They're always thinking about and looking to implement something that is better. Uh, companies use um, HPWS as and significantly higher, uh, that companies using uh, HPWS has significantly higher labor productivity than their competitors. So is it coincidence? Uh, probably not, and that's a higher performance HPWS right there, a higher performance work systems. Uh, succession planning, right? We spoke about that for a little bit, a process whereby an organization ensures that employees are recruited and developed to fill key roles within the company. An absence of succession planning should be a red flag uh, since the competitive advantage of a growing uh, percentage of firms is uh, predicated on the stock of human capital and ability to manage such capital in the future. So these are different levels of succession planning. Uh, I want you to read through those on your own, but I'll just skim through it. So no planning at all, absolutely terrible, right? You'd be left hung out, hung out to dry at some point. Uh, level two, simple replacement plan. Typically the organization has only considered what it will do if key individuals leave or become uh, uh, deliberate, or leave or become de debilitated. Uh, level three, the company extends the replacement plan approach to consider lower level positions, uh, even including mil middle managers. Level four, the company goes beyond the replacement plan approach to identify the competencies it will need in the future. Most often this approach is managed along with uh, uh, promote from within initiative, right? So some companies only promote from within. If you look at uh, Costco, they're one of the ones um, uh, that, that strictly promote from within. They typically don't get a manager from the outside. And level five, in addition to promoting from within, the organization uh, develops the capability to identify and recruit top talent externally. However, the primary source of successors should be from within unless there are key gaps uh, where the organization does not have capabilities, right? So once you check all these out uh, in detail and kind of think, what do you think happens in your organization or what have you seen happen in the past? Uh, more great discussion questions. Uh, what are some of the ways HR can improve organizational performance? So think about these. It will really help you uh, later on in life and even today. Uh, applying the balanced scorecard method to HR. Uh, workforce mindset and culture, your workforce competencies, leadership and workforce behaviors, and workforce success. Uh, so all that to say that you form this bridge. So those four right there forms a bridge between best practices and strategic uh, human resource management to an organization's uh, balance uh, scorecard, right? There always has to be a bridge uh, to uh, form a bridge to, to ensure success. Uh, then the payoff. It's always about the payoff. Uh, companies that measure intangibles such as employee performance, innovation, uh, and change performance better financially than companies uh, that don't uh, perform better, better financially than companies that don't use such metrics, right? So if you don't measure even the, the intangibles, uh, you're not going to do as good as those other companies. And balance scorecard and human capital. So what's your, what is your mindset and values? Do you understand the organization strategies and embrace it? And do you know what to do in order to implement the strategy? Uh, what are your work-related competencies? Do you have the skills and abilities to get the job done? Uh, what are the leadership and workforce behaviors? If you are one of the leaders, are you, ha are you behaving strategically? And your success, can you tie your mindset 
Um, can you tie your mindset, values, competencies, and behaviors to the organization's performance and success? And you should be able to. Uh, last but not least, the great uh, end uh, slide 49 discussion questions. Define the balanced scorecard method. List the elements of a workforce uh, scorecard. Go through those. Learn from them. Take your final tests and uh, you'll be done with me. So uh, that's chapter 15. That's all the chapters in the book. I know we've covered a lot, uh, but I think we've also learned a lot along the way. As always, have a good day and a great week.